So the Skunk Works Orb recently conducted a new kind of game type we refer to internally as Skunkopoly. The name is kind of a portmanteau of Skunk and Monopoly because there was a kind of board game influence behind the team that put it together, though the game itself is more similar to Risk in most ways than to Monopoly. In broad terms it is a turn-based territory control game for our task forces to play running week to week. The board in this case are the three moons of Crusader with key locations on each serving as control points and specific connecting routes between them. Attacks between moons can only occur from mining outposts with the landing pads, which in the context of this game we call spaceports, and controlling locations gives a team points towards victory. The point values for locations worked out as 3 points for the two spaceports on each moon, 2 points for two of the outposts on each moon, and many more 1 point locations. This would drive action towards key locations worth the most points. Task forces have two moves to submit each week, and these can be used to attack or to bolster a location. We'll talk more on that later. And all moves are submitted to an independent game coordinator, so no task force knows of another's moves, until all moves are posted. Attacking another team's territory, or if two teams try to move into the same empty territory, results in a battle. And locations were given specific battle conditions, some all air, some ground, and so on. Task forces were given choices of the two starting locations, and for Task Force Alpha we chose two of the outposts on Salin. Task Force Bravo also selected one of their start locations on Salin, but not both, and all the other Skunkworks task forces all chose locations either on Daymar or Yela. So for us in Alpha, much of our focus would be on attempting to take over Salin, and then defending spaceports. Um, we're gonna use the we're gonna use my character on there as a reference. We're gonna we're gonna travel couple of kilometers away from the Karak. Now, the fact that we had two territories meant we could use both our moves here on Salim, and our goal was to capture the two spaceports. We took Pick's spaceport completely uncontested. This would give us a nice three-point game straight away. But Terra Mills was another story. Bravo had positions both here on Salin and on Daymar, and their plan was to capture the spaceports across all moons. Because of this, they were also attempting to capture Terra Mills. The stage was set for our first battle of this event, and as I said, control points have battle conditions applied to them. Terra Mills being a spaceport has two, depending on whether it's attacked from the ground or from another moon. And for the ground battle, it was Tonks and Cyclones only. But before the day itself, Alpha would get out to run some training in this environment. We'd beaten Bravo in a tank battle on Daymar not long ago, so we're feeling confident. So I thought I just want to make sure you weren't still talking to them. I don't have SRS up. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's just it's just a bit of friendly practice, you know? Radio check, 300. Radio check, good. Four? Okay, uh, we're clear, fight's on. Green team's ready. Roger. Best of luck to you, green team. Just don't go at full speed when you get to that ridge, be ready to, like, uh, throttle back. We wanted to test the effectiveness of different secondary weapons, as well as find any unexpected strengths or weaknesses of the tanks in general. Pinging. Roger, you see it? Oh, uh, I have finger, I have finger straight ahead. There's a. We need to advance left quick. We need to get out of this open ground and advance way to the left. I'll keep eyes on it. Fingers are going to be okay. cresting the hell now. A little more forward. A little more forward. How to measures? One of the big debates was whether distortion repeaters or ballistic cannons would work better for the second gun. And here I was using ballistic cannons, but the shorter range really hurts in these battles. Push left and we'll advance. And you can never ignore what a nuisance cyclones can be. Pericles is just up here as well. They're both in the crater, you're right. Yeah, and the cyclone is in the way in the back, probably just ping our location. Wait, is that what we're taking fire from? Oh, no. Yeah, we are, yeah. Okay, Cyclone's on us. Reverse hard, reverse hard. When they're this close, we can't hit them. Can someone engage the Cyclone that's next to us? Yeah, I'm like stuck on something. The Cyclone was so close we couldn't shoot it ourselves, and we were now stuck on a rock. Regzars would have to come to the rescue. Okay, Pericles is in the open. Fingers is in the open. Fingers is in the open. Engaging. Yeah, okay. 
climbing hips. Pure Keys is up there behind him. Good work. Yep. one down. Pure Keys is smoking. Shit, I'm out of ammo. Good work. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Outstanding. Okay. Good fight, guys. Good fight. <laughs> And after a practice battle like this, we had some time to talk over what each side were doing and gain some insight. Somebody had defenders advantage that time. Okay, so what happened there was we heard you were ready. We started to push towards you. So we saw you guys push into the left flank, so we shifted super quick, like over to meet your flank because we didn't want you, you know, coming around that direction. We were fast discovering that the missiles of the tanks were actually one of its most effective weapons. Yeah. They're still in cover, they're still in cover right now. If you want to watch the tanks, I'll watch the cyclone. Sure, okay, appreciate that. Here he is. Missiles, ah, we're dead. Oh, we're dead. Missiles. I wasn't getting missile lock warnings, which is interesting. He's just, he's coming across that uh, ridge there. Okay, missile. Work, yeah. We've got a missile coming in as well as hooks. Ooh, he took a hit. I'm reversing us. Trying to lock missiles now. Yeah, that was a hit. And distortion repeaters were extremely effective at shutting down a tank. If distortion fire is kept on the target, they cannot regain power either. Oh, yeah, so they're trying to hit the destruction, so I'm going to pull back Can up. Can you uh, get a main gun shot on them down there? Yeah. Yeah! Cyclone down. Yeah, push it down. Just go. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. We're going to... Uh, we are being distorted to all hell here, guys. So as long as distortion kept coming, we couldn't cycle power. Yeah, we're, we're coming, we're going to do a two click off. We're going to do a diversion. We're coming in. No, it's still hitting us. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. We're taking hits. Okay, we're back up, we're back up. Gonna move us off axis. Yep. Okay, I'm trying to get back on target. Back. Bye. Can you get depression on that? You have ammo to shoot, we're right behind them. I got distorted. Gun's not working. Our findings were pretty conclusive that refitting distortion repeaters as our secondary weapon could cause additional chaos for Bravo in the fight. We'd be running a similar strategy to the previous battle on Daymar, with double crew in our tanks and a single cyclone for scouting. The spaceport locations all have an armistice zone, so the rules state that the battle will occur three kilometers out from the outpost itself. One of the teams would drop a reference marker like a ship in the middle of the battlefield, which is also effectively picking the terrain that we're fighting on. And for this engagement, it would be Bravo that were picking the specific terrain. And then, the day was upon us. Alpha were forming up, ready to head into battle. Don't get a fucking kill, I'm going to kill you myself. Gunners, uh, you get your scroll wheel for translation speed. But... But Bravo had also been away training and strategizing, and they come back with an unexpected new approach. All but two of their tanks had a single crew. This was a surprise to us, for sure, but it was a smart move, and in hindsight makes perfect sense. We outnumbered them a little on the night in terms of players, but this gave a huge boost to the number of tanks on the field for them, and would grant much more flexibility in flanking and outmaneuvering. Did they... did you see anyone in a cyclone? No, I don't think they're running a cyclone. Oh. You know, I guess a couple are double crewed, but get ready, guys. I gotta put go in global chat and then we're, we're moving. Recording's live. Here we go. Good luck, guys. We immediately set out to begin scouting ahead of the line. Mining cluster on the left. <laughs> yep, we have one target through. There is one, one thing straight ahead of us. Copy. You can get eyes on from this ridge line here, actually. It looks like they might be splitting their force. I wonder if they are. Like yeah. moving right. I'm seeing a second dust plume, same direction. Bravo were very strong on the left, but seemed much weaker on the right. 
possibly an opportunity. We've got a group, yeah, 12 o'clock, two tanks, they are moving right. If you push to the right, get into the basin, you might be able to take out those two tanks in isolation before we engage the main part of their force. They are coming around the right side of the ridge while the rest of the group looks like they are flanking to the uh, left side of the ridge. Then you can, you know, you can keep they a, are distorting that tank over there, yeah? It's the last one, I believe. Good work, good work, Echo, good work. Okay, the right flank is the weak flank for them. They're committing hard to the left. Right looks like this Miss Blappy and just one of the tank. Echo, we are moving over. Oh, I think they shut down their shield because they're missiles on me at the moment. I'm behind a rock. Okay, they're but repositioning now was difficult. The left flank was under a lot of pressure, and as we moved between a couple of vantage points, the sheer scale of the problem became clear, with the left flank in danger of being enveloped. Uh, careful guys, tell the dog is on the far, far left. At like 10 o'clock. And he's trying to find you guys on the far left side. Okay, we're, we're gonna push up to that flank. I'm gonna go behind our tanks now and... We're pushing to the far left flank to give you some assistance. We're gonna flank them basically. But as we moved up, friendly casualties were building. Oh, yeah, they're close there. Real close. Parker, you got somebody coming directly near the left. Careful, there's the one right in front. Oh shit, we're getting shut up. Whoa, okay. Oh, we're getting a good diversion. Go up there. We are causing a diversion oh. here. They have two of these tanks now on us. Oh shit. We have Deflave right now, but they are definitely on us. Yeah, I Think you can get shot some of these tanks? Our line had been decimated by fire. As a last ditch effort, we tried to take some out ourselves. So I keep going. Returning. Keep frying, keep frying. See if we can get shots on him. Back, we're stuck on a rock. Oh shit! Yeah. No. Oh no. Oh! Ah, oh, what a time to get stuck on a rock. Bravo had eliminated us in the battle for Terra Mills and took control of the spaceport, which definitely put a dent in our plans to gain control of Selin. They had come back from the Daymar fight with a new strategy and it had paid off enormously. Between excellent planning and a nice display of skill on the day, they had definitely earned the victory. But the round was not a total loss for Alpha either, we had gained a spaceport after all, and we were already drawing up plans to counterattack Terra Mills with one of our moves. Bravo were fighting a war on two fronts, both here and on Daymar, and so we knew it was unlikely they would commit everything to this desolate rock. And having learned that solo tanks were very effective, next time we'd be ready. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and send out a huge thank you to all of our amazing patrons, who you can see on screen right now. And in this video, I would especially like to thank Tamborello and Eclipse Mad, who both recently became supporters of the channel over on Patreon. You guys are awesome and I want to thank you very much for the support, it is hugely appreciated. Patreon support is enormously helpful in allowing me the time it takes to edit these videos together and I am enormously grateful to all of you for the help that you give me. If you are thinking of starting Star Citizen yourself, use the referral code in the description below to gain an extra 5,000 credits when signing up for a new account. And we'll be back with more from Skunkworks Skunkopoly very soon.